Hello, today we are in the inner city suburb of Melbourne called the Docklands. For what purpose are we here? Well, I'll tell you. We are here to ride the longest urban tram line in the world, which is right here in Melbourne, Victoria. The tram route in question is Route 75, which runs from Central Pier in Docklands, just west of the CBD, to Vermont South Shopping Centre, approximately 22 kilometres east of the city. The route measures 22.8 kilometres, or 14.1 miles, and is currently listed in the Guinness Book of World Records as the longest streetcar slash tram route, specifically for intra-city transport which means it only has the record for tram lines that stay within one city. For the longest tram route without this restriction, you'll have to travel to Belgium, where they have a tram which basically travels along their whole coastline, called the Coast Tram, or in English simply the Coast Tram, which seems like a very fitting name. But no, today we'll be not venturing out to the Belgian coast to take in all its scenic glory, no, today we will be taking a tram to somewhere even more breathtaking. A suburban shopping centre. Yep. Okay, we start our journey at Central Pier, where we can see the Bolt Bridge and its two towers which make it very distinct. Here we catch our tram. For me today, it's a B-class tram. As we board, the first indicator of the sheer length of this tram line becomes apparent as the amount of stops listed on the board looks insane, as the line has a total of 75 stops. You might be wondering how this tram line came to be so long. Well, it starts with two different tramways. The first section, which came to be part of Route 75, opened in 1885. This section ran from Burke Street to Hawthorne Bridge and was the first ever cable tramway to operate in Australia and was opened by the Melbourne Tramway and Omnibus Company. The second section of what would become Route 75 was a horse-drawn tram which ran from Hawthorne Bridge to Auburn Road and was operated by the Hawthorne Tramways Trust. The horse-drawn Hawthorne section was converted to electric traction in 1916 and then extended all the way to Camberwell in the same year. The catalyst for both of these tramways coming together happened in 1920, when the control of the Melbourne tram network fell into public hands, with the formation of the Melbourne and Metropolitan Tramways Board, or MMTB for short. The MMTB then set out converting the cable tramways to electric traction. In 1927, the portion from Burke Street to Hawthorne Bridge was electrified, allowing trams from the CBD to continue through to Camberwell. The CBD portion was extended slightly over the years following, but throughout the 20th century the only extensions adding any length to the line came by extending further east. Firstly, in 1978 the route was extended an extra 3.5 kilometers to Middleborough Road, Burwood, and then in 1993 it was extended further to Blackburn Road in Burwood East. In the 20th century though, two big extensions were made. Firstly, in 2005, it was extended another 3 kilometers to its current terminus at the Vermont South Shopping Mall, and the final extension to Route 75 came in 2014 when the terminus of the route was changed from La Trobe Street to Central Pier as part of a plan to serve the new development in the Docklin suburb. This is when the route became the Route 75 that we know today, coming in at a whopping length of 22.8 kilometers. Okay, back to our trip on the longest tram line in the world. We're now entering Camberwell about halfway through our journey and it's becoming ever more clear that we are shifting from an urban to a suburban area. The road is wide and the shopping street is lined with the usual suspects on your average struggling suburban shopping street. We've got insurance companies, cash for gold, and possibly the dingiest party for hire shop to ever exist. What more could you want? But still, the tram does not look too out of place in this setting. But this doesn't last for long. As we continue down the median of State Route 26, which is the epitome of a strode. Here we pass Deakin University, 
and the road widens to three lanes in each direction. This journey really is a good way to visualize the increasingly car-based planning as you venture out from the CBD. Sadly, at this point my phone died, but luckily I have my trusty Fujifilm Thinapix J30, so the show still goes on. But soon, our trip will come to an end, as the golden arches and a shell come into frame. We now exit the tram, into the median of a massive road, and have to make our way over the footpath on the other side. And there it is, in all its glory, the Vermont South Shopping Centre. Damn, it's more beautiful than I could have ever imagined. And who would believe we came to this car-centric paradise on a tram? <laughs>